Well, today I received something I was hoping to receive as soon as possible anyway. This is the Tesla wall connector and we're going to install it. Hey folks, welcome back to Geek Smart and today I'm going to do an install that I have been wanting to do for so long and it finally makes sense to do it because I have, well, a Tesla coming to my house within the next month, give or take, month and a half, month, month and a half. And so I wanted to get everything ready for adoption of our new vehicle. And this is what I decided to go with for the charger. Now, of course, I am getting a Tesla, so this makes the most sense. This is obviously going to only make the most sense if you have a Tesla. It's not going to make sense buying a Tesla wall connector if you don't have a Tesla. If you just have a standard, like a GM EV or something like that. Um, you can charge other EVs with this. You just have to buy an adapter. That said, I'm super excited. Super excited to get this, and I was so glad it came today. So... Um, we're going to open up the box. I want to show you everything that goes into this. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you essentially what I've done to this point. I already have the wire from my main panel, which is actually off to the side here, uh, stage left there. And, uh, it goes all the way out to my garage. It's ready for this to go in, um, and wire it up. So that said, let's see what's in the box. Okay. So let's flip down here. Get out the trusty best dead ever knife. And voila. I have been, I mean, obviously I don't have the car yet, so it's not a huge rush, but it's like anything like, it's almost like Christmas, right? To me at least. Ah, oh, there it is. Now I ordered the one with 24 foot line. That makes the most sense to me, so I can basically get anywhere in my garage um, where, depending on where I park the vehicle. So, let's take this guy out. Set him down there. I'm assuming that this, yep, it's already kind of in here. This is the back box right here. This is what you basically have to mount on the wall and then run the, the cables into here. Now I also have a torque wrench coming because they do have torque settings that they recommend setting these to and I wanted to do it as legitimate as possible. So when we actually do this setup, I'm probably going to do it tomorrow, it's going to be in this video. So it's a, I just wanted to get this open, it's almost 9 o'clock at night. So all the hardware here, there is a couple screws there, looks for mounting. and uh, But that's essentially what we have to mount on the wall and uh, mine's going to come in from the bottom. So mine's going to come in from this location. You can also have the connection come in from the top um, or through the back and a couple different locations you can pop out there. Now they do have, I actually downloaded the uh, instruction online when I was actually setting it up to go through everything and make sure that I did the right size wire based on their specifications. Because yeah, even though it says it's a 48 amp charger, um, to get the most out of this, you have to run cables for a 60 amp circuit. So that's the highest powered setting that you're going to get out of this. And I wanted to max it out anyway, so that's what I ran. Um, so I ran 6 gauge, 6.3 uh, wire from my head in there all the way out to the garage. And yeah, looks like that's the mounting record where you can put in where the screws are going to actually go through. So they give you a little template there. And then the cable. So, um, I just wanted to get this on video, the unboxing of it, everything here, and then let's uh, let's go through what I've already done. So this weekend is when I actually did this. And uh, I had a 50 amp circuit here already for a uh, an additional range. I have a upstairs range and I had a downstairs range because the downstairs was kind of set up as an apartment. Um, my parents used to live here when they were younger. This is my grandparents' old house. So, ripped that guy, the 50 amp out. Actually pulled the old 50 amp uh, cable. That's what's actually sitting back over here. I labeled it basement range. Um, it, it's actually six gauge wire too. They ran a hefty wire for that sucker. Um, so I ran that off to the side. Um, and then I ran my new wire in. 
and put it in the same location and of course labeled it so I know what it is and uh, I'm ready so it's all set to power on it obviously no power no juice going out to it um, but we are set and uh, put in my line uh, there it is right there and going up and out all the way out to the garage Okay, now I'm upstairs in my garage. Um, I have some shelving that I'm actually getting rid of. So all this, this wall is actually gonna be completely clear eventually here. But I'm still gonna get this set up so that when, uh, it's already done. So I have the back plate. I already got, like I said, I already ran my wire to here. I have my conduit coming up to here. I actually shortened it to the height so that this would be about 45 inches is what they recommend, um, roughly in this area. There's not. It's like minimum of 18 inches from the floor indoors. Um, they recommend about 45 inches. So I did 45 basically to the top edge. So it's a little lower maybe. Um, in this case, I'm coming in from the bottom and there's just these caps that you can literally pull out. It's just a rubber seal. And then I just got a three quarter inch PVC adapter to go on my PVC that, that I have coming up and I'm just going to tighten that down like so and then I've got this guy ready basically. Now I already put my fasteners in the wall. Uh, my walls are a little bit different than probably yours are um, and how everything lined up with stuff that's on the other side of this wall and wires that are running in it. I'm going kind of mid-span so I actually did uh, zip toggles which, so I did four of them. I'd probably prefer to go in a stud. However, how this, everything lined up and how everything worked with the wire, this is where I'm going. I've already decided that. So, now it's just about getting this thing attached so that we can start working on it. I actually thought for a second one of them broke off, but it didn't. I'm about to get my tools to cut the sheathing on this wire and then uh, get it wired up. Okay, so there is a little guide here, right in here. You're not gonna be able to see it from the camera, but it's uh, how much sheathing you should pull back. Um, pulled it a little extra back on the neutral, or the ground wire. Now, in this case, we're having a ground, and then your two uh, wires off of the main panel on the, in this case, mine's a 60 amp breaker, but off your 40, 50, or 60 amp, whatever you're pulling, whatever wire gauge you're pulling for. And then, uh, they do give you a four millimeter uh, socket, or uh, Allen head key. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these wires back because they hadn't cut kind of pulled in there, so. Uh, and then I'm just gonna route it. So in this case, we have ground and then L2 and L1. So, so we're gonna pull it. And then I actually have an extra ground here which I won't use on this case, so I'll just bend that and kind of put that down here for now. But let me get this routed up, it's going to be a lot easier off camera. I just said, uh, I got the first two ran, you can see I'm pulling it up and over and then down in. And then so the last one is my technical, my L1 or the black wire I got. And that's going to come around like this. It's going to be a little bit tighter. And of course these heavy gauge wires are just a pain, that's why I kind of was doing it off camera before. Because it's just kind of manipulating it as best you can. But and you want to make sure that it goes, it makes all the way through so you can feel it on the other side. But you're not pinching the insulation when you're cranking this down. Now, you are supposed to crank these down to, uh, it's like five or five and a half newton meters. I'm going to look it up. I'm still waiting for my, uh, my uh, a torque wrench that can go down that low. Uh, so right now I'm just doing it firm. So they have a good connection, but I am going to actually come back to this later and uh, make sure it's actually to the right torque setting. I want to do this properly. So that's essentially what you're doing. And like I said, I just kind of tucked my, my extra ground because I did have a 6.3 wire with a ground. Um, so in this case, we're only using the, the main three wires. We don't need the extra smaller ground. We just need the heavy guy. So that's basically all set other than torquing it properly. The last item here is off to the side right in here, there's a little hook. They give you one zip tie in the bag. And what you gotta do is basically get this so it doesn't interfere, right? So, there we go. Now we take the zip tie, get these pulled back. 
out of the way to make sure they stay out of the way too. All right, and then we'll clip that off. And we should be good. Now again, um, these do have to put, be put to 5.4 Newton meters, I think is actually what they, they uh, call for. I'll double check that right here. 5.6, I apologize. 5.6 Newton meters is what they need, these need to be put down to. I can't do that on camera because the tool hasn't arrived yet. So I still wanted to get this all ready to go. Okay. So once you're ready there, then this goes on. And there are four screws that it comes with right here. There are also, it looks like the four uh, millimeter Allen head. And it goes one, two, and then bottom three, four. And these go into the clips for the uh, electrical. So it should slide into place. You should feel probably slide in. There we go. And I'm gonna take and put first one in. Now the reason I don't feel too bad about doing this and getting this done so I can get it all set up before I come back and double check the uh, connection is I don't have a Tesla vehicle here yet so I'm not actually not doing any charging with this yet. I just want to have everything ready to go when I actually do get my Tesla. So now we are up, we're on. Should be able to take this protective stuff off of the actual cable now. Okay, now you can see maybe a little twisty yet, but of course it's been in the package for how long, you know? And then there is the spot over here that you can hold the uh, hold the end. I think we're ready to power it up to get it tested with Wi-Fi. Now, uh, I think maybe a sticker on the back of that too, but they do give you this where it actually does have your SSID and uh, your password to connect to your charger for the first time to get it uh, to get it connected. I'm gonna turn it on, let's see what the lights look like. Well, that's a mighty good sign. Okay, so you can see on my Wi-Fi, I have Tesla wall connector. I'm gonna throw the password in real quick. Okay, once you're connected, obviously you're not gonna have any internet connection because it's not actually connected to the internet. Uh, we can go to the web browser and we're gonna go to 192.168.92.1. And that's where we have the setup. Now, I had a camera glitch. It didn't get this, this part on film, but what happens is originally it's not connected to Wi-Fi. It'll say disconnected or not connected. You go to Wi-Fi and it'll have you select your Wi-Fi access point for your home, and then it'll have you put the password it's for that access point. Once it connects to it, so you can see I'm already connected to my Wi-Fi, um, even though you this uh, update may be uh, highlighted as well, it will automatically update itself if there's an update available. Um, I also found that sometimes it would actually just sit there and thing and then a lot of times if you just hit the refresh button it'll pop back in sometimes it takes a second um, but it might be checking the Wi-Fi connection I guess so while this is actually rotating right here you can see where it's refreshing we're waiting on it uh, the actual Tesla home charger itself is pulsating so I'm just gonna give it a few minutes it might be doing an update we're not gonna mess around with it while it's doing its thing I'm just gonna let it do its thing and then we'll come back okay so it uh, finally came back up the software that's gonna be the thing that if you want to find out information about that, we can click on that. We can go in here. We can check for update. However, as soon as I connected it to Wi-Fi, it did the check. It did the update automatically. Right now, it says no updates are available. I'm going to leave it at that. Installation. This is the one other item that I did uh, change as well. If you click on this, it'll be red usually the first time you come in here. You choose your country you're in, and you choose what breaker you actually installed. In my case, I put a 60 amp breaker with six gauge wire going to it. I'm good for the full 42 or 48 amp uh, service. That's what I can actually use. So max output right now, 48 amps. However, 
I could come in here and knock that down if I felt maybe the wire was getting too hot or whichever. Um, this just tells it what's the limitation that you put in. In my case, I should be able to use the entire setup because that's what I ran it for. Uh, and then let's see, access controls. So you can do only Tesla or you can actually authorize it for other vehicles as well. In my case, I might actually set it for all vehicles because I will be doing uh, other vehicle reviews eventually that I'm hoping to uh, get non-Tesla vehicles into review. So that's it. That's the setup, at least on the app side. Now the same thing goes, I did go on my, uh, my router side uh, to see what it looks like if I actually log in from the IP that's actually on my router. So this Tesla charger has the direct IP, which is... Um, through the direct access point for me going into the Tesla. But if I connect back to my in my Wi-Fi and actually have internet, I can connect to the Tesla charger from the other side. And uh, what can you access from that? Basically nothing, and I'll show you what that looks like. Just show you what happens when we go outside rather than directly through the router. All it says is in order to edit anything, you have to go through the direct SSID that the, the actual charger is broadcasting. So that that password that they give you for that Tesla wall connector, um, I would make sure you hold on to that, right? And even though it's saved on here, make sure you don't lose that anywhere, because that's, and don't give it out, because you can't remotely adjust this. So that is the installation of the Tesla home charger. Okay, so now that I've finished installing it and setting it up, um, I have a couple things to say. Um, uh, I guess upon my experience. So first, um, I will say that as well, I haven't actually gone back to tighten uh, torque setting, I guess, on the screws themselves. Like I said, um, I am gonna do it. However, the torque wrench I ordered got lost in shipping, and so now I have to order a second one. So it's not gonna be on video, but do make sure that you, if you have a torque wrench available, make sure you get it torqued to the proper setting. I wanna make sure that this is set exactly like it's supposed to be set before I use it, um, so I'm gonna do that. So I just wanted to at least put that up there and make sure that was clear. So 5.6 Newton meters, make sure you do torque it properly. Um, so that said. Second, um, make sure that you go through the manual in here to uh, basically run the proper line. So you make sure you do the proper gauge wire for how much amperage you're planning to pull. Obviously with your electrical circuitry, um, and if you don't hire an electrician, you are going to do this yourself like I did. Make sure that you understand what your um, your panel is capable of pulling. Now, I replaced a 50 amp circuit with a 60 amp. Um, so going up that extra 10 amps, I actually have another 30 amp. I got actually, I'm planning on eventually pulling out of my cabinet and replacing that with a 20. So it's kind of, um, I guess, switching it. So uh, I'm confident on my panel. I'm also feeding a lot of solar energy during the day and lots of things. But that said, uh, just understand um, if you're doing it yourself and you're not going to hire an electrician, you know, I'm not a certified electrician. So I didn't want to do the wiring and everything, all the steps on video to <laughs> get picked apart. Um, but make sure you understand what you're doing in that case. Otherwise, it's not a difficult install. Um, if I was to do it again, I would try to get a little bit longer wire because I had a 50 foot six gauge wire and that was, uh, I couldn't get a, a custom cut one without going raw wire and then I'd have to run more conduit and a lot of things went into it. So um, just understand things. It's not a difficult to install. It's definitely not uh, difficult to set up. So I'm looking forward to actually showing this with my Tesla car once I get it. That happens next month at within by the end of March, I guess, is what I'm slated to get the car. So I will do uh, more video once I'm actually using it. Um, and that will be on my TechUse channel when I do the full review of this. So, that said, thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking by to the end here. Make sure you uh, hit like, comment, and subscribe, or whichever you want to do down there. Fantastic. If you want to be updated when I actually do more videos, hit the bell icon on the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you back here on GeekSmart for another future video setup. See you soon.